unmistakable shriek of a youngster thoroughly enjoying himself. The makeshift swing made from disused syntheto rubber tire works like a real swing shoot. Only problem with that statement is that there hasn't been a real swing available for the last 100 years or so, especially one that offloads its payload into a sorry excuse of a stream. Joe, my turn, cepatlah, pleads another youngster, crouching close to the embankment of the stream, looking up at the swashbuckler Joe. Wait lah, few more swings, I promise. So he says, his grin belies the fact that Joe the swashbuckler is imagining himself as that much vaunted hero of the North, a fellow swashbuckler, Cheng Ho. The fable and stories about the exploits of this famed traveller, an admiral of the high seas, becomes the subject of many adolescent daydreams, and Joe is no exception. Zulkifli Hassan, balik! The expression white as a ghost takes on a physical state in the form of our young hero. Balik! Helter Skelter best describes the scene as young limbs struggle with shrubs, small vines, and bushes with the occasional dip in the cold stream by members of Joe's entourage. Our hero scrambles as fast as his sinewy legs could propel him to the source of that summon. In a flash, all that was is now a quiet village track, closely meandering next to the stream. The syntheto rubber tire is all that's left of the perch where the gallant admiral stood watch. Joe cuts his way across villages, taking their leisurely walk back to their homes in the beautiful sunset Rumbau is notoriously famous for. That was the last thing on his mind. He feels the anticipated physical contact of his back as his mum reminds him about the ills of coming home late, and especially during dusk. He expertly moves between lines of slow-moving villages and stops. Total stop. A bright blue light shines on his head, and a slow hum begins to permeate the village. The other villagers have seen this thing before and continue their slow walk home. Joe, on the other hand, has not seen this thing up close, especially when it's transfixed on Joe. Its two red eyes follow Joe's every movement. Joe stops, afraid what this thing will do to him, especially since it obviously has interest in what Joe was doing. What is this? What have I done? Hoi! Apa tercengang tu? Balik! The thing barks. Joe nearly faints as this thing just spoke. Just like his mum. You like your new homejaring.net drone? Ha ha ha. That frightened you. Stop walking home. He'll follow you home. Joe knows. He smells. And not from the escapade he just had. He walks the best he could under the present circumstances. Ma, I will prepare Joe's shower and clean his clothes. Weather tomorrow morning will be bright and sunny, good for natural drying. I will wash Joe's pants tonight as there are multiple organic discharges detected. A soft, monotonous voice permeates from the drone hovering above Joe at the bottom of the veranda steps leading into the kitchen of Joe's house. Joe is a picture of pure dejection. Not only has his fun ended prematurely, he has soiled his pants, and his dear mother has acquired this newfangled device without even telling him about it. Ma, it's not funny. How could you? Ma is humming away joyously. She is a picture of a perfect, blissful homemaker. A small grin escapes her demeanor as she attempts to look serious. Thank you, James. Joe, go and mandi. Take off your clothes for James, please. James, please prepare Joe's mandi. With precision, the semi-autonomous AI drone carries out the instructions of Mark with smooth efficiency. <laughs> James Conan will. His response is typical from a mini alpha male of his family. His dad, who is a strict disciplinarian, is often away most days as his job takes him to numerous locations in the southern areas of the peninsula, leaving Joe in charge. 
or so he thinks. The shower area in Joe's house is typical for early 23rd century Malay Peninsula homes. A generous space with non-slip floors, brightly colored walls that change its hue based on the time of day, and an AI-controlled liquid-based cleanser unit which is totally self-sufficient with water reclamation capability. The nozzle that discharges the cleaning liquid is based on the severity of uncleanliness of the user. These are detected by sensors that line all the entrances of the house. Before James, the information would be channeled through numerous organo holo emitters throughout the house. But with James, it's tidier as he manages the dissemination of the output. Joe, I have laid out your pajamas on the bed. If you need me to dress you, please let me know. Joe shot a long angry stare at this drone that was outside the shower unit. Not only has this thing invaded his privacy, now he wants to treat him like a baby. His indignation begins to bubble to the surface. But his mum, ever the consummate just-in-time expert, announces, James, let him wear his own clothes. He's old enough to do that himself. Come, help me prepare dinner. Dinner in a village is often an occasion when the entire family sits and customs are observed. It is no different in Joe's household. Matriarchal culture and practices are the norm here. Women in the household enjoy virtual control over all and sundry in the family unit. Steamed rice cooked to perfection. The village delicacies heavy with spices and herbs. Cooked, steamed, fried and boiled. Poultry, fish and the occasional venison. These are, however, grown in the backyard of the house. The discovery of growing organic matter and inserting choice DNA has all but eliminated the need to slaughter rare animals. The barbaric practice of animal butchery ended with the commercialization of organoprotein meats by the Australasian co-op from Perth back in the late 21st century. Joe, you know that you will soon be sitting through your ability match session. I need you to prepare yourself for it and James will help you through it. Joe busily munching away his dinner nods in agreement. He has been preparing himself for this day since he can remember. Preparing for the session means mental focus exercises, aptitude-related tests, and forms of physical regime best suited for Joe based on his preliminary results. And how is James supposed to help me? He mutters while continually munching through what's left of his dinner. Ma, Bapa is on Bitcoin. I will put the call to the bedroom. Thank you, James. Joe, finish up and help James with cleaning up. Joe sighs. He was looking forward for a round of holo games with his friends. Another early night, I guess. Bedtime is usually fairly straightforward. But for Joe, his routine is interrupted by the presence of James, this uninvited guest in his domain. His thoughts are mired in anger and directed at his mother. How could she? Before long, Joe begins to slip into his slumber, and all is quiet in the household, safe for the conversation his parents are having next door. Bright and early, need to plan out my activities today, best to get the guys together. Philip's makan day is today, I can't wait, best to sneak up before that thing sees me. Joe quietly slips into the bathroom to wash. Before long, he was ready and about to leave when James stops him. Are you meeting your friends this morning? Joe, unhappy with his surprise, elects to just nod. I understand that you'll be at Philip's house today. If you are, I highly recommend that you be extra vigilant in the presence of those angry dones. They are quite aggressive. Also, Ma will be meeting Papa today in Moa. So there will only be the two of us tonight. Joe stops to absorb this latest information feed from James and concludes how happy he will be tonight without Mark. I will be alone. Well, not exactly, but alone. Hooray! He thinks to himself and quietly smirks. Yes, James, I'll be careful and say bye to Mark. I'll be back after lunch. Bye. 
James, have you seen Joe? Yes, he left very early this morning. Scanners indicate he is with two other individuals. They are Malik and Azrin. They are on the way to watch the first paddy planting of the season at Philip's family farm. I have reminded him to be extra careful near those agri drones. They can be quite a handful. Joe's mom, ever the perfectionist, was preparing for her trip to Moa to meet Joe's dad. It was agreed that since James was around, it would be quite all right for her to go for a short trip to catch up with the real man of the house. She smiles, thinking about how Joe had this strange notion as being in charge. James, please make sure that Joe comes home early and not get into trouble. You know how he is, and above all, keep him clean and fed. Of course, Pa, I will do that. I believe your transport drone will be here shortly. I shall be leaving shortly to keep an eye on him. Have a safe trip, and see you tomorrow. Planting season has always been a period marked by festivities and celebrate good tidings, good weather, incident-free planting, and eventual bountiful harvest. Philip's family farm is no different. According to him, the celebrations can be traced back to his ancestors from southern China. Today, like all the previous planting seasons before, is full of cultural festivities centered around food, glorious food, village delicacies, handmade ingredients, and centuries-old recipes. Philip knows that his gang of three would be arriving soon, probably hungry and eagerly awaiting to scoff down the handmade creations. He, however, has plans for his gang. They need to earn it. Haha. <laughs> They ran, jumped, and skipped their way to the farm whilst having happy thoughts of digging into the food and generally causing mayhem in Philip's home. The last time the gang of four descended on their members' home, pure mayhem erupted. This time around, Philip would be ready. Here they come. Malik was the first to arrive. He was always the fastest amongst all. Hi Philip, are we late? Has it started? Are your parents home? Philip smiled and pulled Malik away from the entrance just as the other two made their way to where Malik was standing. Hi guys, right on time. Follow me. My dad needs our help in the field. All four of them began moving in a single file towards the edge of the field where numerous drones carrying payloads of seed and plant materials can be seen coming out of a medium-sized shed with walls that look like those old corrugated steel sheets and a roof that had multiple solar panels to generate power. Philip gestured to the team to make their way into the shed where his elder brother was waiting, holding what looked like four small brooms about the height of all four of them. Azrin shot an angry glare at Philip, who nonchalantly gestures to all of them to take a broom each from his brother. Guys, a bit of work will get your appetite running. Dad needs our help to chase the crows away from the planting drones. They keep swooping in, gobbling up the seedlings. He needs us to chase them away with these. Philip greens and hand them to the brooms. He escorts the unhappy trio out to the field and shows them how it should be done. Malik the Quick takes his task with gusto, shooing the crows away from the seedlings and a smallish swarm of crows began circling. His bravado looked destined to fail as the moment he chases one crow away, the others dive in to replace. The other gang members began pitching in, but to no avail. The bird began cawing as if to call for further reinforcements from other avian friends. These little humans are causing much distress would be a close approximation. What began as a friendly and fun way to help became one of desperation. As the gang began lunging and shouting, the loudest of course is Malik. Philip's family members looked on with worry as they have never witnessed this type of frenzy from the birds before and they looked highly intelligent. A loud shrill suddenly boomed from above. It was James. He had come at the time when Joe needed help the most. But curiously, instead of scattering, they began forming and attacked the source of the sound. James! Philip! Ask your dad for help! Hurry! James was chased by the birds as he tried as best as he could to evade their attacks. Before long, other security drones began descending to diffuse the situation and suddenly like a light switch, the birds began flying away as if by command. What was that? 
the birds. They are flying away. Look! Azrin points to a large orb above the drones and the birds. Its silent stance and eerie presence made it look mysterious. What is that? Quip Joe. Everyone in the field and its vicinity froze at the sight of this strange orb floating high above the angry drone surrounded by the crows. The strange dance of the crows around the orb made for a spectacular sight this early in the morning. The black shiny orb floating quietly was disconcerting to those that were viewing it, including the intrepid gang of four and a drone called James. The boys were awestruck at the sight, mouths agape and eyes solidly locked on the spectacle. Finally, Joe yelled, What is that? James, the omnipresent protector of Joe, offered an answer. It's a drone. These drones are used for animal control, especially for predators in enclosed wildlife parks. I don't think there's any here. Looks like a mystery to me, Joe quipped. The other members of his gang were too awestruck to respond. Within minutes, the silent drone hums to life and begins its methodical swoop around the swamp. And as quickly as it appeared, it vanishes into the horizon. The swamp that was circling the drone eventually broke their formation and went about their ways. The skies above Philip's family farm was calm and clear again. Everybody that saw the display of the drone and its ability to control the swarm caught everyone by surprise. Guys, we have a mystery on our hands. Philip rolls his eyes after hearing this from the unelected head of the gang of four. What mystery? It's probably just a normal service drone from one of the UNE facilities around here and probably found out what was happening and decided to help. Now, it was Joe's turn to roll his eyes. But before he could do that, Mr. Quick Malik rushes in and announces that he has an idea. Azrin, the quietest of the group, smirks. He was always the deep thinker in the group. Every action was measured. Every decision involved deep analysis of the issue. Malik, however, was an anomaly. He was the one that provided the laughs, the break from stressful situations. I think James can help us. I think he knows. I'm sure he knows where the drone was from. He can help us, Joe. Joe thinks for a minute, then grudgingly nods his head in agreement. Philip, however, was adamant that this was something routine. Nothing to waste the gang's time on, especially when there are more worthwhile pursuits they can do. Joe, ever the adventurer, is taking his normal line in that everything is a mystery and that there are forces beyond their understanding that needs to be unlocked. It's settled then. We investigate. Unilateral decision-making was always Joe's strength, except when it comes to his family, which, incidentally, would have observed all this through James. I need some alone time with James tonight. James, we are friends, correct? But Mark needs to be updated. The stream I sent is still unopened. I shall have to update her. Those are details she doesn't need to know, James. I think the fact that I'm home with you, with a full belly, getting ready for bed, is enough for her to know. Do you think so? The negotiations continue late into the night, with neither giving in to their point of view. What was that black drone, James? It came from nowhere. You had to spoil it by showing up. I had everything under control. I was showing that drone you shouldn't mess around with Joe from Rambau. In his excitement of recounting his experience earlier, the young adult, which he calls himself to his parents, was jumping around showing James his skill with a make-believe broom which Philip had given to the gang. Swoosh! Are you afraid, drone? Ha <laughs> ha! Joe, I think that's enough for now. You are getting excited and your adrenaline is up, which is not good if you're about to go to bed. Joe, I think a warm cup of tea would calm you down. The ever-efficient James disappears for a few seconds and reappears with a warm mug of soothing tea, devoid of sugar, of course. Here, Joe, drink this. Slowly but surely, Joe begins to calm down. Thanks, James. So, where were we? 
Drones and AI do not sigh, but there have been reports of fleeting glimpses of self-aware drones eliciting human traits. If there were the equivalent of an AI sigh from a drone, it would be now. There is no where were we discussion, Joe. You are about to go to bed and that is exactly what you'll be doing. I need to do my report to Mark. All right, James, you can report. But before you do, I need a favor. I saw you handle that drone like you've seen it before. Can you explain that? I need to know that because I'm afraid for Philip and his family. It might come back and cause problems for them. Joe blurted what he needed to say to James with the hope that his decision algorithm might sway him to provide the information the gang needs. I will need a bit of time to process this request, Joe. In the meantime, I suggest you prepare yourself a bit whilst I proceed with my updates to Mark. Joe shrugs his shoulders and walks slowly to his bed in a resigned fashion, just to reinforce his feeling of defeat to James. But the smirk is allowed, albeit disguised.